go. Oh, watch it. All right, you're fine. <laughs> All right. Wait, 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 wait. I, I learned this from Quire. Okay. Yeah, from Quire. Exactly. Oh, we are close this time. Right, Randy, move Woo! back. <laughs> move back. Move back. Yeah, so you don't want your head to give me on the screen. Oh, yeah. Slow down. Exactly. Hello. Hey, Are you ready? Ready. All right, here we go. <clears throat> you know they can hear us this time. Yes. Okay, that's excellent. The, the, the sound doesn't work. Exactly. Howdy, I'm Mr. Holga. Hi, and I'm Todd Puckett. Hey, he remember this time. And this is Don's used photo equipment. Yes. I got it right this time. Yes. Excellent. Uh, so, Don... Excuse me, Todd. Todd. We're at Don's. We, uh, I was at the, I was at the George Bush Museum the other day, and uh, I was actually caught with a, a film camera in my hot little hands. I actually have my favorite Holgas with me, and I had some, uh, let's say, person advanced in age recognize that my camera actually used film. <laughs> and uh, you know, the first question we know the first question is, is does it work? Yes. But the second question is, is what? They still make film for that? Exactly. That is the question. They still make film this for that. This is not pre-rehearsed. No, it, no, no. We are so not rehearsed on this. So. But that was definitely the question. It's like, well, where do you get film for that? It's like, well, you know, you get film all over the place. But ultimately, Aww. you get film right here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's we're essentially going to talk about that today. It's like, you know, uh, what kind of film that uh, Don's has in stock here? Because, you know, there is a lot of film behind us here. That's right. But a few years ago, I was trying to figure out what could Don's Use Photo Equipment do to set ourselves away from everyone else. Stumbled across the idea of, well, get to push and promote film. And so probably around 2009 time frame, uh, started trying to find sources for film and had a little bit of film up here at a time. And what's interesting is during that time when I first started really pushing film, I would just buy 20 rolls of things at a time. 20, mm. like, uh, just 20? Tw just 20 rolls. Like five, six, eight pro packs of, of Portra 400, 120. And get it in. And then, um, you know, just a little bit of everything. And I'd have about two shelves behind me filled up. And as time progressed, we started getting more and adding more. And now we're to the point where I order three, 400 rolls of Portra 400 or HP5. I'm about to place a big Ilford order for this getting back to school. Mm. And, you know, I'm going to, it's, it's, it's going to hurt. So, <laughs> well, I've seen the cases. I mean, it is a lot of film a lot. That, that comes through here. And I, I don't even know that I've used actually all of the film that's behind mm -hmm. you, but I've used a lot of the different types of film in here. So, yeah, so what I wanted to do, as you get more of certain film, then the next step, of course, is to expand the amount of film that you get or the different types of film that you get. And I just um, wanted to do that. And I added, my, I guess, let's see here. We started off, of course, with the Ilford, the Kodak, and the, and the Fuji. Yeah. And then um, started picking up things like Foma Pan uh, whenever I had a chance or uh, could do that. And then I just, I don't know what really what, how it all started snowballing, but picked up Polaroid whenever it was coming back as impossible. Yeah. And selling that one is $38 a box of 10. Yeah. Or eight. Sorry, it wasn't even 10. No eight shots. Not. And I was with them for a long time until they decided they didn't want us anymore. So then I just uh, picked up Instax at that point and, then as you progress, you progress from getting film through third party suppliers to hooking up directly. And Ilford was one of the first ones to do that because they only have one source for, for stores like me to buy it from. So everybody in the U.S. buys it from one place. But the others, you can go through many different other places and get it. So I hooked up with uh, Ilford first. Then I started hooking up with others. Um, recently, um, Fuji. Yeah. And uh, Cinestill and um, Film Washi. I was the first store in the entire U.S. to bring Film Washi in. And then following that, I wanted to be the first store to actually have Lemick. 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 And uh, I wanted to be the first store to have him do a workshop in the U.S. So worked that out, got him over here. 
And turns out that was his first time to ever do a workshop in the entire world. So Don's use for photo equipment is the first store to sponsor a film washi workshop. And um, and he was here for a uh, he was here in actually in the store for a talk. Uh, you know, we actually filmed that that day for a live Instagram. Feed. Yes. And, uh, and of course, I've got the video, which we're going to post later. And so, I mean, it's great. I mean, he was, you know, it, to actually be able to talk to somebody who's making the film that, yes. that you use and actually enjoy using. That is like practically unheard of. So that's that's super cool. Yes. Yes. Uh, we actually did years ago have uh, the Ilford has one rep in the entire u.s and his name is michael bain and he lives about eight miles from the store and so he's been in occasionally and i talked to him one time and told him said hey come in and just give us a history of ilford um uh, talk and we had about 15 20 people come in after the store hours and listen to his talk and it was far more interesting than it sounds it was oh, really yeah, fun and uh, you just, he didn't just talk about Ilford. He talked about the whole film industry back in the 1800s, bringing it all the way up to when he was talking. And that was hilarious. Talked about the high point, the low point, and then uh, the rebound. And from about 2011 on, film has just been going up, up, and up. And uh, it's not what it used to be, but it's a whole lot more than it used to be shortly ago. Absolutely. I mean, it, I mean, it definitely went down when digital uh, certainly started taking off. I mean, I, re I remember specifically that, um, you know, in the early 2000s, uh, you know, digital cameras just weren't quite up to uh, to they film. The two this, and three and four megapixels. I know. It, wow. you, you couldn't get a picture big enough to be the same equivalent of a uh, of an actual piece of film. And so, you know, people were mm -hmm. still using film because of that. But then, I don't know, I guess about to the 2005, 6, and 7, you know, it's like it's really professional cameras started taking off. And, of course, then 35 millimeter was being lapsed. But you know what? Then there's, there's still medium format and large formats that still digital cameras can't scratch because that is so much more picture and you sell me you sell a medium and large format films oh we sell we sell 35 millimeter 120 also um there's once a year production runs from ilford and they produce things like two and a quarter by three and a quarter for the baby graphics and, and we've we got that. that are, you got the four by five. I see behind you. No, no, this is the two and a quarter by three and a quarter. This is the 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 smaller version of four by five. Yeah, yeah. And then we got four by five. Mm -hmm. And I've even got HP five English plate, which is six and a half by eight and a half. I got one of those left. And then I also carry started carrying eight by ten film. And the reason is is I wanted to be the store that had stuff nobody else had. And I so I just buy two or three boxes of eight by 10 and actually would sell it within a year. But this year we now that people know that I have it. Um, I carry the HP five started with that. I've expanded out to the Delta 100 and now we'll be expanding my selection of eight by 10 film now as uh, my next orders are placed for things. But I have several people. I had one guy, um, if I can tell the story, go for it. All right. And, it's his production, so I had to get permission. <laughs> yeah. It's his store. I uh, yeah. If I, I'm not even getting paid for this. Me neither. <laughs> but it uh, keeps me off the street, so yeah. that's good. No, but we're working at the store one day and get this phone call, which occasionally we do. And, and um guy says, all right, I'm traveling from Virginia to Arizona. Do you have any 8x10 film? And I said, yes, I do. HP5. He goes, great. All right, I'll stop by on my way to Arizona. He pulls in and comes in and close to closing time and proceeds to just go through the store and goes, man, this I don't, I don't see anything like this much anymore at all. Mm. And he starts pulling eight by 10 stuff and just pop, making a pile of things on, on the counter. And uh, we started talking and turns out that this gentleman is named Frank Lee Ruggles. And at the time he was the National Parks and I can never say the word Emirate. And uh, he took, he was the professional photographer for the national parks in okay. the U.S. But there's a, uh, he was the ninth one to ever hold that position. And he uh, said that he was calling stores as he was driving along. And I was the only store that he found that carried actually eight by 10 film between Virginia 
and Arizona. And uh, so a few months later, actually about a month ago, he called again. He says, I'm going through, I'm going, coming from Virginia and going to Arizona. I said, is this Frank? And he goes, yes. <laughs> so come on by. So come on by. And I, I've got uh, HP5 and Delta and he bought one of each. I had six eight by 10 packs up here, our boxes. And since just in a couple months, sold five of them and I only have one left. And that, so my eight by 10 production, which if you understood things, you know, five boxes in a few mm. months is, is like, it's the sales are taking off That's, that <laughs> for that. Because a, a lot of people go to the, you know, just mail order that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, so, I mean, that was initially the, uh, the gentleman I, I talked to in the museum, I said, yeah, I can easily say, hey, you can order the stuff online or you can get it here, here and here, all that kind of great stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of, this, one of the things I really love about a shop like this is the fact that, you know, normally when I need something, I don't need it a week from now. I really need it today. And to have a shop like this that I can walk into and actually get something is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it, it, I don't care if the price is a little bit more or something like that. I mean, you know, I realize if I don't support a shop like this, there won't be a shop like this. And then soon then there won't be an online shop either. So I really, you know, I really do like this type of a shop here and that's why I buy my film here. So, yeah, uh, no, we appreciate that, you know, because our prices are going to be close. Yeah, yeah. Um, you close. know, we've got a little bit more of an overhead, um, but uh, well, somebody's got to buy Don lunch. Yes. In fact, it, we just sent him out for lunch. Well, yes, I gave him $10. Oh, I thought it was five. Ten. Uh, it's a big yeah. lunch. I wanted him to stay away a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I gave him 10 old bucks and he's going down to uh, one of our favorite restaurants down the street and pick stuff up. Well, he'll eat there and then pick stuff up for me. Mm. He said, you yeah. not get anything for me. You, did you place your order with him? <sighs> did you give him $5? <laughs> you gave him 10. Uh, it's for me and him. All right. So that's it no, the end of this video today. I really, yes. really appreciate you guys watching. Like I said, there is a lot oh, there, of film here. Yeah. Well, okay. A couple of, sorry, I'm going to do a little bit longer. Yesterday was George Eastman's birthday. Oh, George. Happy birthday, Mr. Eastman. I'm not singing the song. Okay. <laughs> I'm not either. Uh, Y'all can, but uh, we were going to film this yesterday, but he was going out and getting a birthday cake for George and spilt it on his shirt. So <laughs> I this is Saturday. He did. He did. It's George Eastman's birthday cake all over his shirt. Exactly. And then, but okay, that's it. Is that it for you? Well, there's lots more stuff. There's too much stuff. We're, we're trying to keep them short and sweet, guys. So we'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right, later. Ciao. Up. Oh. Gone. <laughs>